Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you could join me. I'm so excited. This is incredible that I get to interview one of my clients that goes by the name of three. Now we have to keep his identity uh, unknown just to be on the safe side. Um, but he is a wealth of knowledge. So while I don't know if you know, but if you've read my book, A Hypnotist Journey to the Secrets of the Sphinx, as I was uncovering all the information, my clients kept telling me that there was this being named three that had a lot of information about the Sphinx. And all of a sudden, as I was regressing this client, I asked who I was speaking with and he said, I am three, three is me. And it all fit together. I had been waiting for that information. It's so profound. And I know that he is really here to change the world. But like I said, um, for his own safety, we're gonna keep his identity private. And I, speaking of which, I wanted to ask you about your first Men in Black experience. When I remember the first time I met you, you were telling me about that experience in school, that they actually came to your school. What was that like? Can you describe it? Well, first of all, I got you a pretty flower here. If I can get it unstuck. See? <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, also, yeah, I was in high school. I was in my freshman year of high school. Uh, I was in my homeroom class. It was a severely overcrowded high school. So there was like 32 kids in this place. And I stroll in pretty much late, like I always did. And I went and sat in the back corner of the classroom where I pretty much, you know, always sat with my friends. So the bell rings and the door closes and everybody's goofing off and the teacher's taking a roll. And the door opens again. <laughs> um, and two officers walk in and they're flanked by two men dressed in black suits with earpieces in. And uh, everybody was like, oh, I wonder what's going on, you know? And I'm, I'm like that too. I'm like, oh, someone's in some trouble, you know? And uh, <laughs> they said my name. <laughs> and the whole classroom just is like, <sighs> looking back at me in the corner, there was no way I could even crouch down and try to hide or anything, you know? So I'm walking out of the classroom and the whole class is just giving the oohs, you know? And everybody's like saying a little snap, like, what, what do you do? What do you do now? <laughs> So they take me out of the classroom and they're holding my arms behind my back like they were gonna arrest me and everything, you know. The two officers were holding me and then the two men in suits were flanking back behind them. And they walked me all the way down to the front area of the school. Um, and I, I had been all over the school, but I don't remember this hallway being there. I could have just been not paying attention, but it was just strange that it was there, I'd never seen it. And they, they walk me up to this room and open the door. And inside of this room is a light hanging over a chair, just one spotlight, like a movie, like an interrogation room. And I'd say it's like a, it was a big room. It looked like it was a computer room, but everything was pushed off to the side. So this is just this big open room. And the cops kind of like slam me down into the chair, you know what I mean? They're being like, tough guys or something but they have no idea what's going on you know I mean I didn't either <laughs> and all around this chair there's probably I'd say uh maybe 20 or 30 people and some are sitting some are standing some are dressed in nurse outfits suits some of them have sunglasses on and all this stuff <laughs> and they started asking me questions that I don't really remember at first because they use this tactic where they would like um question me from different angles and uh, yeah, so I would be like trying to listen over here and then over here and then there's somebody back behind you too. So you're, you're completely disoriented when they do this stuff to you. But some of the main things I remember is that they were saying that I had like a big mouth and that I like talked too much about certain things. And what uh, were they upset you were talking about? Like uh, leaders of the earth stuff, like people that uh, the powers that think they be or wish they be. Um, that kind of stuff and space people stuff and the connection between that, you know, and I'm always like, screw it, just be yourself. This stuff's all a joke anyway, you know, I was that guy. And um, so, I mean, I've just been doing that my whole life. So I didn't realize that anybody had paid attention to the crap I'm saying, like, who would listen to me, right? Just like running around with the skateboard. 
And um, they basically, at the end, were telling me that if I kept going the way I was going, that they were going to label me as the leader of a cult. And I was just like, I was, you know, I'm thinking in my head, like, what do I do that would make this happen? And like, I learned how to play drums with pencils on a book in my room. I play video games, I skateboard. And I'm trying to figure out how this even made any sense, you know? And um, around that time, that was like right at the end, I don't remember standing up and I don't remember walking out of the room. Oops, hit my own beak. But I, I was getting yelled at and then the door was closing behind me and I was facing away from it. And I don't have the memory of that gap in between. What do you, oh. what do you think happened to you? I don't know. Um, it was such a disorienting experience that I mean, we should we should find out with hypnosis and yeah, and then I'm, repost. <laughs> I'm down to I'm down to do that because it's always kind of perplexed me, you know how how well that was orchestrated and it was intimidating for sure. But the entire time I was just like I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Like I was just pleading the fifth or whatever because I didn't actually know what they were talking about. <laughs> I was Why inside you- the cult, so yeah. How do you think they found out about you? Um, the only thing I could think of is maybe somebody filed a report somewhere, like a teacher that was just doing something normal and it got, it was seen by somebody down the line or something like that. And they knew something, you know what I mean? Something like that. I have no idea actually how any of it started or why. Let's but find out where they took you. Let's find out <laughs> why it was a different place. But, um, I it was it was really wild, but it was around the time I started having really like wild experiences with ET beings too. So, did yeah, you yeah. have those experiences after, or did you have those experiences during, but just before and during that time? Or did something too. did something happen that changed the way you started having experiences after that experience with those people? Yes, like after after the experience with them, they started getting more intense. That's for sure. So there was like, it was almost like a push and pull. Like the more that these beings would start contacting me, um, the more adverse, like, I don't know, the more pushback I got from it, like uh, from that side of things, like where teachers and stuff were starting to like, I would get written up. I, <laughs> I was always in detention and stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't really know, but like, we got to edit all this crap out while I mumble. But <laughs> I do know that after that experience is when I had my really wild experience with um, like the mantis, the mantis and the grays and the shadow being and the light being like all in one night. And that was like, not very, it was a few years after that, you know? So um, before that, it was just like quick visits as much as I, I can remember. Are you, are you sick of talking about that experience? Do you want to talk about it again? Which one? The, the mantis being. Oh, uh, we can, uh, we'll let them, we'll, oh my gosh, I got to move this tray. We'll let the people go and uh, check that out on TikTok. I'm kind okay. of like, uh, I spent 10 hours recording that video. Oh, okay. So if people want to check out um, your Mantis being um, experience, that's on TikTok. And how do they find that? Well, on TikTok, it is three dot official, but it's thr three three dot official. And uh, yeah, it's on there. I've been posting videos about the Grays for a couple of days now. And um, I know they're fantastic. It's fantastic. I love all your videos. They're amazing. I'm going to go over the past lives that we've looked at too in my videos. I'm going to do my reenactments and everything for them. So can you, um, can you talk about one of the past lives that you don't mind talking about on here? Sure. sure. Um, It's, it's a, it's a crazy one too, because like when I came into the past life and you were walking me through it, I was walking up like a dirt path to kind of like a, a circular stone building like a castle. And I go in through this door in front of it. And I know that I'm on a, a journey to find something that's hidden. You know what I mean? So I walk down this cobble path and I'm like, this place I've never seen before. So I'm going to walk inside this castle thing and go see what's up. So. I'm walking it, walking down the path and it curves around, you know, and I can see the walls shimmering, like light reflecting off of a pool. And it's just real mesmerizing, you know? So I'm like, this is sweet. So I keep walking around this path 
And lo and behold, there's this just crystal. It's like a teardrop shaped crystal sitting on a pedestal in the middle of this room. And up above it, there's a hole in the ceiling. And like energy is coming through this thing and shooting up into the sky. All right. So I'm sitting there. I was kind of just staring at it, you know. I'm like, I want to touch it. But I know I'm not supposed to touch it. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> but I'm going to touch it. I want to touch this thing. So I just reached up to it and I'm like, oh, you know, and I touched it. And as soon as I did, uh, all the cobblestones in between the stones on the ground started lighting up and like light was starting to glow brighter and brighter and brighter. And the next thing I know, I'm inside of a wheel shaped ship with four spokes and a round part in the middle, um, looking through a window, like down at this planet where this energy is coming up from that crystal into the center of this craft. And I'm just like, kind of like, like, I'm confused because I didn't know like how exactly that happened. I didn't expect anything like that to happen. I thought maybe I died for a second. So um, I'm standing there, I'm kind of admiring the, the wild spacecraft that I'm in. And then I kind of noticed that to my right, there's this really tall blue Arcturian standing there. And I'm just like, wow, you know, like it's wearing like this long, elegant cloak. It's like super decked out. like. The Arcturians definitely have like some of the best fashion sense like in the universe. I really love it. <laughs> so I'm um, like, you know, asking this this being, I'm like, what what is this? What where are we? And, you know, like just explain that it's a a ship where this energy meets and it goes out into the universe to other places. Didn't really get too far into it, and I was like, before I was wondering, you know, what's in the middle? Like, can we go see that? You know, sorry, I guess a little bit out of breath with this mask. But, uh, You're good. You're good. <laughs> and we uh we kind of just pop down into that circular part and inside of it there is there are uh these little stone pillars and platforms all around but they're not like um carved perfectly it's like natural stone shapes that are kind of lumpy that have crystals sitting on them and all these different crystals look different and they have different colors and they're pulsing at different rates and all this stuff and down it goes down like uh like a theater down to the middle where this is glowing, swirling light thing. And that's where the energy was coming up from the planet. And the Arcturian takes me down to all those crystals and stones around the room and is uh, it's like, you know, go ahead and touch one, go ahead and check it out. So I'm like, okay, I mean, it looks cool. So every time I would touch one, it would take me to a different lifetime. And we were viewing, my past lives through a past life, which it was like this layered thing. And right. it was super interesting. And I was shown that uh, I was a mantis being. I was shown uh, what else, that I was this aquatic amphibious one. Oh, I uh, remember, yeah. Yeah, uh, I was shown so many things by this one being. And uh, it let me poke around for a while. And it's like, all right, come over here. And I'm like looking over because it's standing next to this like swirling rings of light and just just it just looks like it would shred you up you know it's like come over here and i'm like okay I'm like uh, what's gonna happen you know and it just kind of reassured me that everything would be okay and that i should just go ahead and walk on in so i like uh, took a big breath and i kind of walked into this thing and it was just like uh like if you were in a tornado and all of a sudden it just stopped you know, once you pass to that swirling energy, and it was just this warm, like liquid love. And, and it was just words were coming into my head, but I couldn't make out what they were saying or anything like that. But it felt like it was just a, a cleansing thing, you know? Wow. And that's um, when I popped out of that part of the past lives. Do you think you can go to that anytime you wanted to? Do you feel after connecting with that Arcturian that you can reconnect with that being I'm, I'm almost positive yes for sure well, what, what did that being look like um the arcturian is similar to like some of the grace features of course with the larger eyes um but their irises to me they look like they had irises and pupils to me so you know some people are going to see them differently but um the irises were like a green color you know, almost like a contrasting color to the blue, super like hypnotizing. And uh, the, uh, the, the robes were white and purple. Um, 
super tall. It was like seven feet tall. I had to look up, you know. Do you so know what they, tall. do you, I mean, uh, it was a while ago, but do you remember like what their life is like to be an Arcturian? Not really. I know that they're, they, they're more of a collective consciousness group, you know. Um, mm -hmm. They work more towards the betterment of the all. And they don't have as much of the ego as beings from a lower realm do. Uh, their lifestyle, I mean, they're spiritual teachers. You know, that's the only thing that I know them as. Um, I don't really know their day-to-day -day life as much as I know some of the things that they teach about. You know, what do they teach? About what? It's love all about love. Yeah, the, they're one of the beings that constantly are about you finding your, yourself and doing your shadow work and self-exploration to know yourself better, to elevate yourself for the ascension process. It's so interesting because you're not the only person under hypnosis that says in the, uh, you know, the future potentials, humans, if they continue with their technology and spirituality, the future is an Arcturian. But if they continue with their technological ascension, basically, they are more like a gray. And it's so interesting that both those type of races still exist. So yeah, yeah. does that, do you think that means, do you think that means that there really are two paths and that's, that's just evidence of the, these two paths that are possible? Yes. Uh, the grays are kind of stuck where they are, you know, um, they got rid of that complex, the mind, body, soul complex. They got rid of the body and put in an avatar. So they don't get to experience ascension properly. They don't get to get that real world karmic uh, muck build up to be able to shake it off and then bloom like a lotus and move up dimensionally. They, that's one, one of the reasons they're trying to, you know, um, have the hybrid programs is to be able to get their essences back into uh, like a, a, an organic form to be able to experience ascension again in the sand and become things like, you know, Arcturians and stuff like that, actually move up dimensionally. Wow. But they can't do that without our help, really, because we're the prime candidate for it. And this is already done. It's already happening. Like, right. Our people running around in, in real human bodies now. So. The light is already won, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're just watching it unfold. You know, we're in that echo of a dream. This the memory, you know, of a past self we used to be when we're really far ahead, close to source or source ourselves already, you know. Um, how far, however high up you want to see it, you know, it's not just your higher self, you're literally source. So this is just an ancient memory to what we really are. What do you think we really are? Oh, we're just source energy. We're just, we're just thought. Yeah. <laughs> we're thought, you know, uh, made of love, you know, and that's really all we are. And you know, do you, um, do you, uh, do you think that there are People, well, actually, I know because I have had clients that remember being a gray, and I know you have remembered being a gray before. Um, do you think a lot of people you meet have had an experience as a gray as well, or do you think that's something that's not very common? I'd, I'd say it's pretty common. I mean, ever since they've had the ability to, to pull that off, I mean, they're going to do it, and they talk with people to like either like in their dreams or in their past lives or future lives or whatever existence they can reach these people in and they get their permission to do it. And sometimes they'll do a side-by-side -side soul where there's two, two entities in one body so that soul can start gaining and earning some karmic points, you know, work off some of them and gain some karmic debt to be able to manifest here in the body next cycle or whatever. Um, there are full, full on soul transferred, you know, where it's just gray energy in a human body and that's done with their, their manip manipulating the genetics of the human bodies to be able to accept that energy from a different universe, essentially. Because so do you mean? Older, so do you mean know. that there can be a, a a gray that is just projecting? Like I know they use avatar bodies, so it would be the same. They're using an avatar human body. It's not an avatar body. It's a real body. Once the oh, okay. program is like fully going, like it is, it's a. Uh, it's just the, the genetics of the human body can now handle like a soul from a gray. I mean, and it's, it was difficult for them to pull this off, like more difficult than say like the Arcturians, Pleiadians and all those other beings that are doing the same thing um, because they're from a different universe, not just right. a different dimension, they're from a different universe. 
So when you have those energies that are just, they're literally not the same, they're not from the same reality. So things had to be done to, to manipulate the human enough to get that energy in there without having deformities or deaths or anything like that happening. Would, do you think that there are Arcturians that are incarnated as a human? Yes, um, almost every every being that we can name has been involved. I think there's like 24 more, um, you know, different beings that have actually helped humans evolve to the way they are and have their counterparts and human bodies living. Well, so everybody just wants to be a human for this experience, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, humans have a, a potential that, you know, uh, they don't fully understand. What's the, what do you think is their potential? Like, what do you think humans really need to understand? I mean, I've heard this before, but I just wanted <laughs> to get your take on it. The human's true potential is, uh, is essentially a superhero, a highly evolved being that operates out, out of love and uh, togetherness and for the greater good of not just themselves, but the collective and the planet that we exist on and the reality we exist on. We have that manifestation potential to move mountains if we needed to. If we just keep working towards our highest self, we can achieve that. And that to me is the human's greatest potential is the, the ability to, to bend reality into whatever form you need it to be in and not just have to accept what, other, what somebody else is telling you it should be. You you spend you uh, get contacted a lot right by um, different beings. Do you have conscious awareness, or is it mostly when you're sleeping and you sort of remember in the morning? I'm aware most of the time. <laughs> I've been conscious and physical for a lot of it, but it it just depends on the beings. If the being itself is not really a third or fourth dimensional, maybe material body it's not really gonna want to show up in any other way than maybe a dream state. Um, I've, I've seen the plasma beings, I'd say twice um, without being in a dream state. Wow. And that was really interesting. I was driving a car one time and I was just watching one. It, it came right over and just hovered, but then I had two memories of it. So. But yeah, a lot of these beings from the higher realms are going to work through your dream state because that's when you're easier to access. They don't have to show up, make a scene. It's just, it's just easier, you know. And the higher dimensional they have to go, um, you can almost guarantee that it's going to be a dream experience. We see it in reality, uh, like in, in the current waking state. It would be probably hard for your body to even like register what you were seeing. You might not even see it. Uh, but something about being in the astral is just in between dimensions. It's a little bit higher than where we are. It it's easier for them to communicate with us. Why do you think we don't remember? Why do you think they communicate with us and then they, you know, erase our memory and we don't remember when we wake up? A lot of it has to do with the fact that um, if we remembered everything all the time from those kinds of beings, we wouldn't really be able to function. Yeah. Um, I mean, they can give you like when, sorry, I have to adjust my face. When they, they give you a concept per se, you know, like, um, they don't, they don't give you like a word. Uh, right. If they say like, they can describe an entire movie by telling you the word green, you know, but mm -hmm. when you get that, that word green, it's just all this, all this information, the whole movie's called, just condensed into one little word. Right. And, um, so if any information from them takes time to digest. And a lot of it's just too confusing and beyond the, the physics comprehension of most people to even digest it properly so they kind of just keep it in the subconscious or just don't let you remember it it's just a little bit easier to live your life yeah they, your conscious like remembers the incident remembers everything that happens your higher self right. does. but it doesn't have to cloud your daily activities by bouncing around in your brain you know and why do you think they come and contact people they're trying to help people i assume yeah usually they're they're related in some way uh, to each other, uh, whether the being that's contacting them is like an ancestor that ascended to a different level, or if it's a future version of themselves coming back to get information that's important for them in this life, um, from the past, even like the time traveling beings, like the grays and stuff. So there's usually some sort of personal connection that people don't remember. They, um, you know, but they would you know, have to get the 
the regressions and stuff, they will be able to find out just how the connection was formed, you know what I mean? So it makes a little more sense and doesn't scramble the mind. That's, that's the main thing with these things where I don't remember this stuff, like you just can't handle it, you know? Right, right. Um, oh, something I was gonna ask you and I totally forgot. <laughs> um, no, it's true. Um, what did the blue plasma beings look like? Could you see shapes or outlines? Oh, for, for me, okay. So the blue plasma beings, I'm pretty sure they're fifth or sixth dimensional, maybe somewhere in the middle, because dimensions do overlay. Um, but I usually see them as um, blue translucent spheres just filled with lightning, just lightning bolts crackling around, just flying around. And I've seen them um, probably, I don't know if you can even see that in here, but like uh -huh. the size of a softball. Um, I've seen one, you know, it's probably about the size of a tennis ball. I saw a red one and I also saw a blue one that was like really big. And that's the one I saw when I was driving. But every wow. time I see them, they're in a sphere shape filled with lightning and they're crackling. You can feel the energy um, and the vibrations from them, but they don't, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't electrocute you. I don't have scars from it, you know? It's I remember. Plasma. So. What did you say? Because it's not lightning, it's like a plasma consciousness. And, just looks and, like that fits into our dimension. And those are the beings that usually do the crop circles, right? Uh, that's what I understand, yeah. The, a lot of beings from higher realms that come with any kind of message, their, their form and their energy is so beyond this, um, this reality's, uh, I guess, aspect ratio, pixel aspect ratio, that they come down here and they actually just look like a sphere of energy. It's just the easiest form that they can take, but um, they do sometimes trans, like, show up in a humanoid form as well. What were we talking about? Oh, Sorry. no, that, that <laughs> answered my question. That was perfect. Um, I remember one time when you were under hypnosis, you said, oh, there are a bunch of greys watching, watching this session. Do you feel any, any beings watching you right now? At this point with that TikTok going on, I'm pretty sure that I'm just under scrutiny all the time because it's like I'm talking about it like pretty openly now. And, uh, yeah, so if anybody that talks about them, they're watching in some form. And from what I understand, with the way that I've been interacted with, with these these uh, these beings, these greys and stuff, um, they can kind of like uh, view through me. You know what I mean? Like see what yeah. I see and all that kind of stuff. So that's, uh, I'm probably pretty sure. <laughs> that they're probably watching right now. Right. Supervising. Have you had any other um, interaction that you're aware of? consciously with the men in black not that i'm aware of consciously that was just the big one that was i guess the like my one chance or something i don't right. know we'll, we'll find out i guess well um, see you can they you know you're spreading messages but with um a disguise right no, they're smart though you know if they really wanted to, to come after me they could, but it should be fine there's a lot of things shifting around and even even in the places of power where people are trying to get this information out. So it's it's maybe not as uh, risky. Right. Say. I mean, people do just disappear from talking about this stuff, but um, it's a little bit harder to do that when people are so public and they're known on the internet and stuff like that. It's, it's harder to make people just like disappear. Right, uh, it would be hard to make you disappear because you know there's a lot of people that know about you. Right, people will be like, where'd he go? You know? Like, yeah. So um, there's a little bit of protection in, in being public, but then there's also the risk. So it's a it's a bit of a balance, I guess. You know, because some of the things I talk about can be like controversial, I guess, if uh, if you really think about it on a deep level for these people that want to control everybody. Like if you're trying to teach people how to free themselves from the shackles that they've put on themselves and then the shackles they've allowed others to put on them, you know, that's kind of a threat for a control system. But Definitely. humans don't operate well in a control system. So. What did you say? I said, but humans don't operate well in a control system. Right, right. Um, and that seems to be slowly dismantling, although it doesn't look like it is. But right. there's so many people that are starting to question their reality and things like that. So That's the most important thing to do is question everything in reality. Question me, question, question yourself. <laughs> um, that, that curiosity, that, that learning, that desire to find something new out is is really gonna 
open up a lot more doors for you in the universe. That curiosity is really what gets those kind of beings to interact with you because they're like, okay, well, if you want to know, let's we'll test you. You know, they'll show up in a dream or they'll see them in the sky. And then next thing you know, you're on a table <laughs> and they're like over your face checking you out and stuff. You know, so I just yeah. rambled it. <laughs> no, that no, you're you're amazing. Um, so if people want to get in touch with you, you oh, could you mention where they can find you again? Oh yeah, um, TikTok is pretty much the only place to find me. Um, I've kind <laughs> of tried to erase myself uh, for the most part on the internet, um, but TikTok is uh, is t h r three three dot official. Uh, just search that on TikTok, and you'll be able to find me and all the mischief and videos that I make. And that, you know, I'm putting out my experiences on there, just information about the different things that I've worked with. Um, you know, story time, of course, like the, the experiences I have are usually pretty wild. So I try to put my reenactments on there and everything is super cheesy. And oh, really it's fantastic. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I'm hooked. <laughs> I have a blast doing it. So I'm glad people are liking it. It's like my nightlife now, you know, after work, I'm up, up until four in the morning and they're like, with my props making little videos about ETs and stuff, you know, like my well, neighbors I, think I'm a total weirdo and it's great. I love it. Well, I hope you'll come back on, on here again. I really appreciate you coming to talk to us. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to say about anything? <sighs> Thank you, by the way. It's been fun and I miss our sessions. I want to come back for some more soon. Me too. I'm always available. <laughs> They're for your helpful. session they're very helpful for what i do i guess you know so i appreciate you and your knowledge and you know what you've done for me oh thank you so much like i really everybody else, like everybody else just do that shadow work and start yeah. finding yourself again go deep down and find those pieces of the soul you left all over reality and bring them back and get on that track and now's the time for ascension so get yep. busy <laughs> now's the time it's so yeah. true Thank you so very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Sarah.